Hey there, Commanders. The community goal this week is the Zachary Rackham party goal, and it's junk. I'm not even going to bother doing a full community goal review on it. There's no real reward, and the description doesn't even say if you get to keep the system permit when it's over. So um, my recommendation is, instead of doing that, um, start setting up the ship builds that you want to use to collect the uh, from the upcoming Palin community goal, which we know is going to relate to corrosive cargo transport. Uh, for those who may not be aware, corrosive cargo in Elite Dangerous is exclusively Thargoid related. There aren't any other corrosive cargos, at least that I'm aware of. Maybe there's like one or two weird things you can collect exploring. Uh, but this community goal will involve some, some Thargoid related content and corrosive cargo. So um, collecting Thargoid hearts, collecting probes, maybe Thargoid nexes. I don't know what the restrictions will be. Depending on what they are will affect how you go about what you're doing. I've prepared two quick ship builds. They're not completed. They're just to illustrate the kinds of things that you should be looking for in a ship for corrosive transport. Um, really, there's two extremes that you can settle on, and I don't I don't really recommend trying to float in the middle because you know, the medium ships, there's a lot of internals that fall below the size four category where um, you can't put a 16 ton in, you've got to put a two ton in. And it ends up being kind of awkward. Uh, but the two best ships for Thargoid Corrosive Combat in my Thargoid Corrosive Collection, not Combat, in my opinion, are the Anaconda and the Clover 3. The Anaconda, for sheer volume of cargo that it can transport, I've got all size 4s in here and it gets up to 146. If you're one of those commanders who has a size 5 or a size 6 corrosion rack, um, you can put it in here and get even more capacity. It slots in nice and easy. There's not a whole lot of planning or strategy around it on this particular build. Um, if you happen to have a size 5 or a size 6, then a whole bunch of the medium ships start to become a lot more usable. But since I didn't manage to hit that threshold, um, I haven't been playing around with this. And I think there's going to be a lot more commanders who uh, are going to be running with just the size 4s available from tech brokers, if even that much. Um, so this build is assuming that you didn't unlock the size 5 or the size 6, um, like me. Uh, I just didn't have enough time to get to it all. Um, and I think that this will end up serving a lot more people than uh, trying to do a specialized build for the five or six racks, at least at this time. So the big thing you want to be looking for in a ship for corrosion cargo hauling is uh, optional internals of size four or greater. And the one ship in the game that has the maximum number of size four or greater optional internals is the Anaconda. The uh, Federal Corvette looks like it has more, but because it's got two military restricted uh, internal optionals, um, it ends up being able to fit one less rack than the Anaconda, basically, no matter what you do. So it's the Anaconda that, that, that is the king of this. And if you're going to do a run for max capacity, especially if you're just flying around in space, it is the Anaconda that is going to be basically the ship of choice. If you want to throw a collector limpet in, uh, just a, like a 1A or a 3A, you'll sacrifice some capacity um, for a little bit better efficiency when you're in normal space. But most signal sources that you're going to jump into are only going to have a Thargoid probe. I don't think there are very many circumstances where you'll find more than one. There are some surface sites that spawn them, um, but that's about it. Thargoid, a Thargoid Nexus is another thing that you can target for. I can't even remember where those come from. I think they're Thargoid surface bases. Uh, and then Thargoid Hearts, which come from blowing up interceptors. Um, that's going to be one of the least time efficient ways to collect Thargoid internals. So I'm hoping the community goal doesn't require them because then it really just becomes an AXI excursion where you need to be flying in an AXI fitted ship with maybe 16 tons tops of usable cargo capacity for carrying Thargoid hearts or other related stuff. And then you have to kill a whole bunch of interceptors just to be able to get this stuff. And most people who do AXI combat are going to be fighting in groups. So if you're in a big group, there's going to be a spat over who gets to keep the heart at the end of it. And if, assuming you can find an AX uh, combat zone where you can get a whole bunch of interceptors together, you're probably only going to get like four or five hearts per full completion, and that includes killing the Hydra. Um, and then you still have to deal with the corrosive cloud that can kill you and fighting with other people over who gets to actually have the take. It's going to be a giant pain. Really hoping that, that we're not required to only get Thargoid hearts or only get Thargoid probes, but that is a possibility that we end up with a bifurcated community goal where one goal is probes only and one goal is hearts only. Probes are going to win that out just because you can more consistently find them and uh, be assured that you can actually acquire them without risking your ship as much. 
I'm kind of hoping that Palin just put out, puts out a general call for uh, Thargoid-related stuff, period. Because that opens up the possibility to a third way of acquiring Thargoid-related cargo, and that is uh, Thargoid Scout surface site crashes, which are scattered across the Pleiades. I believe there's one pretty close to Maya, uh, where Palin used to do his research. I think it's within, f yeah, it's like 40 or 50 light years away. I remember a DBX was able to do that jump in one run, and for a while the credit meta was not even to have corrosion racks on a DBX, just load up with as many of those corrosive canisters as you can, fly to Obsidian Orbital, and Palin had a, a mission where you could basically trade those in for 20 to 30 million credits a run, and you could just do that over and over and over again and make 100 million credits in less than an hour. It was nuts. It eventually did get nerfed. To my knowledge, the Thargoid surface site uh, scout crashes are still in the game, and they still produce this, um, I can't even remember what the cargo is called, it's like biological samples or Thargoid ship parts or something like that. Um, but that is going to be the fastest way to collect Thargoid-related corrosive cargo, assuming that the community goal allows it. And that's kind of a big assumption. Um, so I would keep an eye out for that, and I would, if that is the case, also be aware that when you're dealing with surface sites, the anaconda can be a bit tricky to park, which is why I have the Cobra 3 in here. If you're on a tight budget and you uh, don't want to drop a whole bunch of money on a ship you're going to throw away in a week, Cobra's actually not terrible, especially if you have a fleet carrier and you can store stuff in it. Um, this is probably going to be what I use. I already have a Cobra 3 that's fitted for corrosive transport. I just need to add more racks to it. Um, but an anaconda, if you're you know willing to put the credits up is probably going to be more efficient assuming that you can find a place to land cobras it's, it's in kind of a weird spot for small ships where it's actually really phenomenally good at corrosion resistance where some of the mediums because they've got a bunch of modules that are smaller than size four they end up being a little awkward to work with and you do start running into parking issues with mediums depending on where the thargoid scout crashes uh, any of the small ships are basically assured to be able to park really close to the crash site where you can just zip around and scoop everything up in like a minute and be back in your ship, board flip, do it again, get back in, board flip, and just keep repeating the process over and over and over again. It's it's a, a really smooth way to get things done. Um, if you can find a Thargoid scout crash site where an anaconda can park relatively close, then you could probably, you, you'd be able to load this in hour, hour and a half and uh, fly it up to your fleet carrier or jump to whatever station is going to be requesting these materials, which I strongly suggest, which I strongly think is going to end up being in the bubble somewhere. Um, so fleet carriers are going to be a, a major tool to help make this a lot easier, where if you don't have a fleet carrier, you probably have to take your anaconda all the way back into the bubble, and that's where jump range is going to matter. So if you put an anaconda together, I would definitely get engineering on the frameshift drive. Um, it, it gets... Um, fully laden, it's going to get like 38, so you're looking at maybe a dozen jumps tops to get from a uh, far out system in the Pleiades back into the bubble, depending on where the goal is. Uh, Cobra's actually not all that much worse. Uh, total laden only comes in five light years under what the Anaconda gets. So, you know, 14 jumps, 15 maybe, depending on how the route gets plotted. Um, they're going to end up having similar travel times if you don't have a carrier, um, but the Cobra is going to have to make that trip a lot more often, so the efficiency is going to be a lot lower if you don't have a fleet carrier. If you do, both of these ships will work. The Econda will get you more time on site actually doing revenue generating activity. The Cobra will require a little bit more uh, fiddling around with uh, carrying loads up to orbit and back. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, Cobra is actually faster in normal space, so it makes up a little bit of time there. Um, I don't think that there's a lot else to say about this. Uh, Cobra, as listed here, is going to be 2.6 mil and Anaconda uh, 270 mil. So this will be the high ticket item, and this is what I recommend if you're on a tight budget. The only engineering that you should do is just get the frameshift drive tightened up. If you've got something you want to throw at the thrusters, you can do that too. This one's got four Ds for some reason. You slap four A's in there you get a little bit faster. But this, this is like, this goal is going to involve basically building some throwaway ships that you'll use once and then probably never touch again, unless Frontier comes in and touches up the trade system. I've been meaning to do an ideal trade specialization video for a while. I'm hoping I can get to it sometime here in the next couple of weeks. 
Um, but there's a lot of improvement that can be made to the way that cargo is handled and the types of equipment you need to carry it. And I'm hoping at some point that we get some of that gameplay because it could really increase the, the dynamic gameplay around trading and make, make it a little bit more nuanced than it is right now. I love corrosion-resistant cargo racks for the specialization that you have to go into to move Thargoid-related content, and I'm hoping at some point we get other kinds of specialized racks. Um, racks for hauling gaseous materials, racks for hauling hazardous materials like explosives, where the rack gives you some advantage that a normal cargo rack wouldn't have. But um, I, I'll get into that another day. Uh, for now, though, that's all I've got, so I will catch you guys later.